Hey there guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, make sure to hit the subscribe button. So for today, I thought I would do my flawless foundation routine for you guys, along with giving you guys some tips as well. I found that one of my number one questions that I always got from clients, from just people and you guys in general, is how do I get my foundation to just look so flawless and honestly it's really simple I've learned a couple tricks along the way I learned a couple tips and a couple hacks from other makeup artists and other youtubers along the way and I thought I would take this time to kind of show you guys through a kind of get ready with me tutorial version of it if you guys are unfamiliar with my skin type I do have combination to oily skin I have a very oily t-zone and kind of normal to dry patches on my cheeks so I kind of have that mix of both skin types however I do lean more oily so this particular video is gonna be geared more towards Oily skin types, however, there are going to be a couple tricks in there that you guys with dry skin or normal skin can also use as well. I will say that I've never had the problem with having very problematic skin. However, I do get very oily throughout the day. I have what I call a bacon grease skin. Foundation does not like to sit on my face for a long period of time. And I also have very large pores throughout my T-zone area. And kind of have some dry patches every now and then as well. My skin is very weird. I don't have acne, but my skin is nevertheless still weird. It's not perfect. But this is a great video to show you guys how to make your skin look like it actually is perfect. I feel like the normal question I get from you guys and my clients is not just how I do my brows, but also what foundation am I wearing? How do I get my foundation to just look as flawless and look so smooth on the skin? And this video, I'm going to show you every single thing that I do to get that smooth foundation even finish the skin. Especially in the summertime, this is a great tutorial to do for the summertime. If you love wearing that full coverage, you don't want to take away that coverage. You still want to get the longevity out of it though. This is a great video to help with that and give you a couple of tips and tricks to really just make your foundation last throughout the entire day instead of just melting off your face halfway through the day with this humidity and the heat going on right now. And really all the products that I'm mentioning in this video as well are holy real items to me. I live by these products. I stand by them wholeheartedly so I really hope you guys are excited. So if you guys are excited to see this video make sure you guys go ahead and give it a huge thumbs up and subscribe to future videos down below. Also hit the notification bell. I do upload twice a week and I really hope you guys decide to join the family. But if you guys are excited to see my flawless foundation routine and tips then let's go ahead and dive right on it. Got the hair pushed back. I know you guys hate it when my hair is in my face for these videos but it's probably gonna end up going up by the end of this video because I'm currently like sweating. I hate filming when during the summer because it just gets so hot in this room. Alrighty, so when it comes to doing my foundation and wanting that flawless application, wanting everything to look great, I always do my eyes and my eyebrows first, simply just because when it falls in your foundation, it's going to be really hard to clean up. And if you're using a, like, a really glittery shadow, and it has like a lot of fallout, you're going to have all that glitter on your cheeks. It's not going to be easy to get away. So I always recommend doing your eyes first. I know it's a little weird. It took me a while to get used to, but I honestly haven't gone back. I do that every single day, even if I'm just wearing a tinted moisturizer. And it's probably the longest part of my entire routine, so it gets that part out of the way. But before you even think about applying any kind of makeup to your face, I always recommend going in with skincare. Skincare is one of the most important parts of having a flawless foundation application. You're going to get great results if you take care of your skin and keep it moisturized. So every morning, I always cleanse my skin. I use a very hydrating cleanser and then every now and then every other day I like to exfoliate my skin I do it in the morning just because you get that baby soft smooth skin and it allows for your moisturizer to go on deeper and penetrate deeper into your skin right afterwards so the two exfoliators that I personally love to use one is the Bosha exfoliating peel gel this has been my favorite for so long I'm almost out of this one this one's lasting me so long and I do it about I want to say every other day this one's a really gentle one so you can use it as much as you want even the most sensitive skins can be able to use this and even if you have oily skin still exfoliate your skin that way your moisturizer can penetrate deeper and you don't realize how much layers of dry skin is built up on your skin this one's just so fascinating because you pump it out and then as you work it onto the skin it's going to start to form all these little bumps and that's actually your dry skin it's not the product which is so fascinating you can actually see it working which is why I like it but I love this one because it works as a physical peel also as a chemical peel as well. So if you typically use an alcoholic acid, you're getting that chemical peel, but this one's great because you get that physical feel along with the chemical peel and you can actually see it working. Other one that I've been using a lot lately has been from Ulla Henderson. It's the Pore Balance Facial Sauna Scrub. This one is perfect if you have a really oily skin like I do, simply because it has the volcanic sand and ash in it that's gonna really help dig up that excess sebum that's blocked in your pores. It's really great. It warms up on the skin, so it's really nice in the winter months or even just in the morning to 
wake you up a little bit but it also is formulated with AHA so that's going to also help do a chemical exfoliant as well I really like this one it is more of a physical exfoliant since it does have granules in it so if you have very sensitive skin I don't know how well you'll get along with this just because it is kind of rough and typically when I do like my Bosha exfoliant I kind of want to go like really quickly and do it really fast and everything because I don't want the product drying on my face this one though add a little water to it massage it onto your face and do it very gently it won't hurt as bad I know when I first went in with it it was hurt like a lot and it was very rough but I learned that you had to be really gentle with it gently massage it onto your skin and you'll get a nice clean slate this has been my favorite lately and I absolutely love it also both of these are really great if you like more natural ingredients into your skincare both of these brands are fantastic to look for so after I cleanse my skin after I exfoliate I like to go in the moisturizer and my personal favorite moisturizer for oily skin has been the leaf true cream aqua bomb this has been like my favorite for over a year now I absolutely love it it's super hydrating on the skin they do make a moisturizing balm for Version, which is a cream version whereas this is a gel and the cream version is going to be great if you have normal to dry skin but if you have combination oily skin go with the aqua bomb the gel formulation is going to penetrate deeper in your skin it's not going to cause you to be greasy throughout the day like the cream would highly recommend this brand it's a great Korean brand and I love a lot of their products and they're very affordable if you guys take away anything from this video I hope it's the skincare like that's the main thing I really want you guys to to get a grasp up and really take home with you guys. So skin prep is all done, ready to go. Of course, if you wear serums, you can do that right before you moisturize if you want to. However, I'm just focusing on those three essentials that I think will make for a great flawless foundation application. So now that skincare is out of the way, it's time to prime. And now I do use more than just one primer on my face. I do have oily skin. However, if you have dry skin, you can use some of these products. You might not be use all of them, but I do have some that are geared specifically towards oily skin. First one that I have that I use and this is only for oily skin is the Benefit the Professional Matte Rescue Gel. I only use this on my T-zone and it really does a great job at controlling the oil without drying out my skin. I do have combination skin so there are times when I do have a couple dry patches in my T-zone so this is going to help not only control the oil but also not accentuate any dry patches that I may have. Now that you usually use it on my chin because that's where I have like the worst oil I think. My nose is pretty bad but my chin's worse. I had the chin of a 12 year old boy I always say like I can, can never can control it there's always something going on on my chin so the next step is probably one of the most important steps I would say in this entire thing this is really what's going to help make you look like you have very poreless very flawless photoshop skin and it's definitely the milk blur stick I know this thing has gotten so much hype on social media but I'm telling you guys it's amazing. It really does a great job at really making your skin look like it's photoshopped. It fills in every single pore. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. And the main thing that I really love about it is that it's formulated without silicone and dimethicone, which a lot of people are really worried about. They're either allergic to it or they just don't want it, you know, getting in their skin and calling up their pores. This will not do that. It just glides over the skin and makes you look like you have Desi Perkins skin. Like I'm telling you guys, you're going to get that nice, clean, solid finish. It's really going to be great for that foundation application. So I just twist it up and I just really work it mainly onto the t-zone that's where i'm worried about the most it's where i have my largest pores and i'll hold my chin and then i have a smile line around here that i like to really work it in and i'm not bearing down hard at all i'm really just gently gliding it over it you don't want to tug on the skin because that's not going to be good later on in life normally like before i found this thing i was using the hourglass veil primer and i still have that and i still use it um every now and then like when I'm wearing a very lightweight base but if I want you know that full coverage foundation that's going to look absolutely flawless I use this it's kicked my little hourglasses butt all right so we primed our face now the second most important thing that I cannot stress enough is this next little tip I talked about this in my in-depth foundation routine I did last year because I saw it from Nakia Joy she talked about it in her video and I thought it was genius I never thought to do it before and ever since I've done it it's changed my foundation game it's changed my life so my nose is where it gets the most oiliest right here and then on my chin I get so oily there no foundation can ever last on my skin for about more than three hours by then my foundation starts wearing off on there until I saw Nikki Kia Joy's video where she mentioned that she used a MAC paint pot on her nose to keep her foundation on longer and I tried it and it works and oh my god guys this will literally change your foundation game if you had the same problem where you cannot get foundation to stay on your nose or on your chin or wherever you're oily at I highly recommend taking a matte paint pot that is your skin tone I have the shade painterly and literally guys I'm almost out of it I only have a little bit of it left I use this not only on my eyes but I also use it on my oily parts of my skin this will change your game I literally cannot stress to you guys enough how awesome this stuff is going to be and how much longer your foundation is going to last with this. So I just take my small elf brush and I'm literally just grabbing 
just a little bit of it. You don't want that much because you don't want a thick and heavy layer of it on. And I just really just apply it on my nose. And then I'm going to work it in with my finger because the warmth of my finger is going to really help work it into my skin. It's not going to be like a thick, heavy layer. That's the last thing you want, especially in summer. But I did this trick when I went to Disney with Hannah and it really made my foundation just last for so long. And you guys know like Orlando's humidity is absolutely unreal. Like it's next to nothing. It's so hot and humid. I would be in the Disney parks all day and not have to worry about my foundation because this little hidden hack saved my foundation and it just made it look so great and flawless. So that's also going to help because you're not going to have to apply so much foundation onto that part of your skin. So it's going to be a lot lighter of a layer and it's not going to feel too heavy. That way it's not going to cake up and fall off later. Okay, so now that we've got the priming done, I'm going to do a little bit of color correcting. I don't do this always. I just do it sometimes every now and then when I have a couple breakouts like I do right now. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this. This is the NYX HD Green Concealer. And I'm just scooping the excess off because I don't want too much because this stuff, a little bit of it goes a long way. And I'm just taking it right there and right there. That's it. And then with my finger, I'm just going to tap it in. I don't want too thick of a layer because then it's going to be harder to cover up the green. Alrighty, so we've got the priming done. We've got the color correcting done. Now it's time to finally get to the foundation part of the skin. I'm telling you guys, prep is the most important part to getting that flawless foundation. I'm telling you guys, I cannot stress that enough. So for foundation, I'm going to take the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation. I'm in the shade Fair and Neutral. This has become my favorite everyday foundation. And I know that I did a first impression on this foundation. And in the first impression, I didn't like it because I didn't really know how to use it with my skin. Now that I know how to use it, I know how to control the oil and keep it on much longer. This has been my favorite foundation. I love it because it's a water foundation, so it's very lightweight on the skin. It's not going to feel too heavy, but you can still get that nice medium coverage with it. And then I'm going to take a couple droplets of it and just put it onto my palette. I do like a whole little droplet of it. And then to blend it into my skin, I'm actually going to use a damp beauty blender with it. So this is going to even sheer it out a little bit more, but it's not not going to feel too heavy on the skin you're still going to get a nice coverage from it if you want a little bit more coverage you can definitely use a brush with it but i prefer the beauty blender with this since it is a water foundation i think they work well together and it's going to take any of that excess foundation off my skin since i am using a beauty blender i do feel like i have to use more product than i would with the brush like i end up doing a couple squirts of it just because the beauty blender does eat up any excess of it so that's the downside but if you want it to really look natural then I definitely recommend using a beauty blender because the beauty blender is going to help press it into the skin and make it look like your skin, not like you have like a layer of foundation on like a brush typically would. I always recommend if you have a little bit of redness to kind of use a more yellow based foundation. It's not going to really accentuate any redness. It's going to help neutralize it out on your skin. So now for concealing, I'm going to do some spot concealing before I go in and do my under eyes. And I'm going to take the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in the shade Chantilly. I love this concealer. It's really nice and very full coverage. And I just take my finger and just press it onto any spots that I have. So where we put that green concealer, I'm just going to put a little bit there and a little bit around my nose. Not too much because this stuff is very full coverage. A little bit of it goes such a long way. Way. I'm just pressing into the skin with my finger and then I'm going to go back on top of it with the beauty blender. This concealer is great too if you want to do a very lightweight foundation um, and you just want to spot conceal, it's a great concealer to use. So now for concealing under the eyes, I'm going to be using of course the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. You guys know how much I know about this concealer along with everybody else in the beauty community. And I'm just going to take off any excess that I have on the tube and I'm just going to do a triangle shape. I know that I use a lot of it unlike some people do. Some people say you shouldn't have to use this much. I do just because I'm using it as a highlighter and I want to make sure that I have great coverage along with my face not looking so flat. I'm just going to take what I have highlighted first and press that in first and do the eyes last. And then again with my damn beauty blender, I'm just going to take the Tarte Shape Concealer and just press it into the skin. So I'm going pretty hard with it because the harder you go, the less coverage you'll get. The more coverage you want, I definitely would press a lot lighter, more gentle. But I really want to work it into the skin and not have too much concealer taking up underneath there. So now that I am done with concealer, I'm going to go in with some powder and set it. So I'm going to take the RCMA No Color Powder, aka Parmesan Cheese, as Katie from Lustral Excessive because it literally looks like a Parmesan Cheese 
container. I hate the packaging of it, but I love this powder because it's really great for the eyes, really setting your whole face too if you want a very light layer of powder because it literally has no color in it. It's not going to any flashback. You're not going to have that white cast underneath your eyes. So this is a great one to use. And I'm going to take my beauty blender with it. I'm not going to bake. I don't typically bake like a typical beauty gurus have been doing lately. I just take a little bit of it. Press it underneath the eye and then I'm going to take it where I have a smile line at because I don't want that going anywhere and where I have a couple bumps. And then I leave it on for about like a couple seconds, really not that long. And then I just dust it off. I don't like to leave it on for too long. If you have severely oily skin, especially underneath your eyes, and you really want your concealer to last a lot longer, you definitely can leave it on for about a couple minutes. Typically, I just leave it on for less than a minute, if a minute. And then for underneath the eyes, I'm just going to take my NYX. HD banana powder. Take a little bit of it on my Real Technique setting brush. That's not the excess. And then brush the excess of the RCMA powder away. I use the banana powder to dust it away because then I get this nice bright highlight underneath my eyes. So now for setting the whole face. Now if you have dry skin, you don't really need to set your face. However, I have very oily skin. I need my foundation to last a lot longer. So what I have found is that I love using a powder foundation and lately I've been using the Becca Skin Perfecting Mineral Powder Foundation in the shade Porcelain. I also have the Becca Multitasking Powder in the shade Fair. But this is what I have really found has made my foundation just look so flawless and amazing as it has because not only does it give a little bit more coverage since we have a very lightweight base going on, it's going to give a little bit more coverage and it's going to fill in every pore and just make the entire face look very photoshopped, very clean, and it doesn't feel heavy on the skin. So I'm taking my Beauty Blender, I'm going to use the other side of it, and I just take a little bit of it, and then I'm just pressing it onto my skin. I really want to make sure that I get most of it on my nose, because this is where, like I said, I need my foundation to last the longest. And immediately I can see a difference on my forehead. Much of my freckles have been diminished. The appearance of it is a lot more even, and it doesn't look cakey which is what I love because since we use such a lightweight base the foundation is not going to look cakey underneath this powder foundation and that's really it that's really all I do just get a nice even finish on my skin but really this is what's going to make your skin just look very poreless very airbrushed and just overall last so much longer on your skin I find that Anytime I do this, I never have a problem. Like I said, it really lasts all day. I get so many compliments on it. And honestly, I've had people come up to me and say, when I have my foundation like this, they can't see my pores. And they automatically think that I have great, natural-looking skin. But honestly, I have pores out the wazoo. I don't know why I just said wazoo. But honestly, I have such huge pores on my T-zone. It's ridiculous. But anytime I do this, people literally don't think I have any. It gives that illusion that your skin is naturally just flawless and it doesn't look like you're wearing too much makeup either. All right, so if I'm going to head and finish off my eyes and my lips for my eyes, I am wearing the Cutie Beauty Rose Gold Palette. I love that palette. Let me know if you guys want to see a tutorial with that. And then for my lips, I am wearing what I have left of my Bite 36 liner. I love this lip liner so much. I need to get a new one. And then the MAC and Sam Ravindal Lipstick. If you guys have a Canadian friend that can get this for you, I highly recommend it. It's been my favorite nude lately. I honestly can't get enough of it. I'm so proud of Sam. I think it looks amazing. And the very last step and the last tip that I have for you guys to really make your foundation just last so much longer is using a setting spray. I had the Urban Decay All Nighter and I'm just going to set my face with this. It's really going to help lock everything in, make it budge proof. This stuff, I swear by it. I've been to Vegas in 100 degree heat and this has really made my foundation just last 10,000 times longer. Alrighty guys, so that has been my flawless foundation routine and tips. I really hope you guys learned a lot and got a lot of tips out of it. Let me know in the comments down below if you try any of these tips that I gave you guys and how they work for you. I would love to know. Also, you can let me know on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. All my links are right up here. Definitely go and check me out. If you guys really like this video, make sure you guys also give it a huge thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. Also hit the notification bell since I do upload twice a week. Also, let me know what some tips you guys have. I'd love to know. We can have a little discussion down in the comment section. But that's about it for me today, guys. And I will catch you guys later. Bye-bye.